history. This is people, places, and things. And in history, this is Carol Church Gardner coming with you with a brand new one. Since we're all having cabin fever right now, I figure I would give you some recipes, guys. And these are like our favorite recipes, and some uh, I might give you later, depending on how long this video is. I'll even actually give you some homemade remedies. How's that sound? Okay, so the first one is you take, get you a skillet. But you're first you're going to take some potatoes, whole potatoes, slice and dice them however you want, and put them into your microwave. Make sure you poke holes in it, guys, because it's going to go boom in your, in your microwave. It's going to explode. But make sure they're already soft enough that, you know, the cooking process is, you know, they're not tough on your teeth. You're going to take next a can of Spam or ham. If you got ham left over from a holiday, this is a great one. You dice them up and you throw that into the skillet. Okay, so while it's cold yet, guys, don't start it. Just do that. Next thing you're going to take is a can of green beans. Empty all the water out. Make sure it's all empty. And then you put that in with your ham in the skillet. Once your fries are, or the potatoes is done, put that into the skillet, guys, along with that. Add so much butter to it, like a half a stick to a stick of butter, depending on how you love it. Make sure you put salt and pepper in it because you're going to saute that. And once it's sauteed, you can serve it. So you're going to either serve it on a regular plate or a bowl, however you want to serve it, guys. This is like the awesome meal that... Kids is always going to ask for. Another one is called potato soup. Potato soup, you're going to need a pot for this one, guys. Or you can stick it in the microwave. You're going to stick them in, hold the potatoes. Make sure you poke holes in them because they're going to go boom in your actual microwave. You don't want to clean that mess up. Or your oven. So you want to leave these whole. Cook them on the st t stove top. Put, like, I would say, like, eight, nine, ten potatoes. If they're smaller, you're going to want to put more. But if they're big potatoes, like bacon potatoes or whole potatoes, you want to put like seven or eight good-sized ones. Another one you want to do is uh, while they're cooking on the side of the other side of your stove, you want to make sure you get a skillet out and throw some hamburger. I would say about a pound of hamburger saute that up. You can put onions in with it. I can't put onions in it. My husband don't like onions that way. But you can saute them up and saute everything up, including your hamburger. Make sure it's nice and brown. Okay, so you're going to sit that on the side, turn it off. You're going to go next to your pantry, get either frozen peas or canned peas, whichever one you want. But if you're using frozen, you might want to stick it in with the potatoes while they're cooking. That that would, like, cut some of your time down. But you guys who's using the actual, like, canned ones, make sure you save your can of water in there. But you can open that up and wait on the side for everything. You want to test your potatoes. Once you can put the fork through it, pretty easy. That means your potatoes is done. And you can... Pour some water off. I would say almost over half the water. Keep like a fourth of water in there. That'll help the starches to thicken up the actual water if it's the, to the sauce and stuff that I'm going to tell you next. Okay, so you're going to, while that you got half of that done, you want to put a stick of butter in there or a margarine. You want to put your salt and your pepper. Make sure you have it whatever way you want. Another thing you want to add to this mixture is make sure you put your potato with your potatoes. You want to make sure you have your hamburger and peas inside there with, with the, your actual potatoes. This is how you make the soup. Okay, so you got the veggies, you got two veggies, and you got a meat. Another thing you want to do is get ragu, ragu double cheese, or you could use the Velveeta, whatever way you like to cook. The double cheese is a little easier. So I throw in one 
one jar of double cheese. And I actually add them, after I'm done with that, and I throw that into the pot, I reuse the jar to see how much milk I can use. I usually put in a half of a jar of milk. I shake that up real well to clean out what's left of the ragu cheese. I throw that in with the pot and I cook that up until it's really thick, guys. I love stuff thick. Some people like it thin, but my family, we like it. The thicker, the better. So we might add more flour to it flour paste or flour into it while it's cooled off to try to thicken it up. So when you rumble it up, it'll come to a nice thick consistency. You either serve it on a bowl or you can serve it on a dish. This is the easy one. This is like, as soon as your potatoes is done, it takes another half an hour and everything's edible. Another one is we usually do is Grab a pot, like kind of like a spaghetti pot. Not like, I'm not talking thin pots. All these are going to have like where you, you make your spaghetti. You want to get a can of jar of applesauce. You might need two jars, guys, depending on, or one great big jar. You dump all that into the pot. And you want to add some sugar and some cinnamon. And this is why, guys, this is apple dumplings. So you're going to make sure that's to the way you want to taste. It might stick to the bottom of the pot. These are all good meals, so, you know. Put your stove on low while you're doing this, guys, because it gets sticky. When it starts bubbling, this is when you need to put your dumpling. Make it to the recipe of the heat and lids and non-lids, so that's important. Make sure you put spoonfuls here and there all over like you would a stew. Don't put it in one spot. Make sure you move them all over so they get nice and done. Same consistency. So while they're cooking, you could throw some cinnamon and some sugar on the top of their mixture. When you do this, it should be one or two like tablespoons of sugar. And then you cover another teaspoon or tablespoon with another bunch of sugar that you haven't covered and a little bit of um, cinnamon at the top. So you want to make sure you plop one of your dumplings or two in there. And you're going to put the applesauce mixture right on there. So guys, this is how easy applesauce and dumplings are. Another one is my mom thought of. You want to use some Bisquick or... Jiffy or whatever. You're going to make the drop biscuits, guys. This is what we're going to make is biscuits with berries in it. So you go out and you get either black caps or you get, our favorite is black caps. You can use blackberries, raspberries. And what you do is you make the drop biscuits and you're going to fold the berries in. After you got all the mixture done, make sure the berries go last and you fold them in. And then you're going to drop them on a cookie sheet. You do it to what the recipe calls for on the box, how hot the temperature should be. You serve it with, after they're done, you you got to make sure they're done, guys, because you don't want to eat them doughy. And then you serve them in a bowl with either milk or plain, whichever way you like. Sugar on the top of it while it's before it's baked. Put them in a bowl. They're easy. They're done. You can add milk to it. You, and I love them plain. To give it a nice flavor. You want to add a little more sugar than you usually do to burst up them flavors of the actual berries. Okay, so I can't give you another recipe, so here's some homemade remedies. If you get a cut or scratch or anything on you, this was an ancient Egypt one, guys. You put raw honey on it. Not processed honey, raw honey. And it actually heals your actual wounds. Why? Because it's got an antibiotic, guys. It's actually one that they're starting to use back in the day. Now they're starting to really use it a lot in the hospitals, guys. This one you're going to have a thumbs up for. Another one is... Take a garlic clove, 
peel it down. If you got an earache, you want to get to the garlic clove with no, you know, skin on it or nothing, put it in a pot of boiling water. You don't need a big pot, just enough to boil the water. Keep it on the side and every so often warm it back up. You can put that in the ear and it stops the earache right away. I didn't believe it and I heard it on the History Channel. I tried it and it actually does work. So guys, this is two that actually works that I got on there. Another one is if you have a fever with these new flus and stuff, if you have a, a tremendous fever and you can't break it, make sure you got a yellow onion, guys. This will help with the fever. You actually, like, cut it down, dice it down, and then when you have it in a white cloth, make sure it's white, and you beat it until the juices come out. Another thing you can do is wrap it around your bottom of your feet where the pressure points is and you can put it on your wrist. This will help take the fever down. If you actually do this two times, it will help break the fever, but it has to be white cloth around your pressure points. You can also do it with the animal. It does work too if they're running a fever. But you have to do it around the before their paws or their hose. This will be the next one. Hit a share, hit a like, make a comment. I love to hear the comments. And thumbs up, guys. And make sure you subscribe because you're always... Thank you, Tyler Winners, for making a comment and saying I'm amazing. Thank you very much. See yous.